Welcome to this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live, the show which ensures that you profit from your time spent here with experts, either through the industry insights, information, or simply learning from them. And today we have Sarah Losi, marketer, podcast producer, personal finance rambler, she calls herself, but she knows a, quite a bit about personal finance. And she's the founder and president of Favorite Daughter Media. Welcome to the show, Sara. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited to be here. You are welcome. Welcome to the show. Welcome to India. A lot of people would like to learn more about podcasting, especially about podcast guesting, so that they can grow their business through it. This concept is people are learning more and more about it. You are an expert. You will be able to tell about things more. Why, why should people believe that they can grow a business, grow their business through podcast guesting, Sarah? How do you like to tell them? I mean, people have been doing it for years. Uh, podcasting is one of the fastest growing mediums right now. And um, it has been so powerful for businesses, but it has to be done correctly. So there are correct ways to be a podcast guest. And then there are incorrect ways to be a podcast guest. I've been a producer of a show. We're on our fifth season and I have seen both. I have seen the good guests and the not so great guests. So there are definitely ways that you can use this to grow your business. Um, you just have to put a little bit of homework and take some time to really figure out the best way to do it. And that's what I'm here for. Right, right. So do tell us first about how to be a good guest and so that you are able to make the best use of being a good guest. And also say, tell us about how to not be a bad guest so that it does not leave a bad pay taste in everyone's mouth. How do you do that? I leave it over to you so that, you know, you take your time and help us understand uh, how exactly all this works. Because uh, a lot of people want to understand this stuff by, as, as if like step-by-step -step process. Several questions, two, three questions at the same time, Sarah, so that you can respond <laughs> at your own pace. Over I'll try to, to hit all of them. <laughs> well, when I talk about being a good podcast guest, um, basically, like, think about podcasts that you've listened to and podcasts that you've watched. And when does it seem clear that like this is not a great episode? This kind of feels like an ad. That's something that we hear all the time. It's podcast episodes. They bring on a guest. And of course, the guest wants to promote their business, but they're only treating it as basically free ad space. And I've had guests come on our show that I didn't release the episode because it just felt like an ad. And I don't know about you, but when I listen to um, anything and the infomercial section comes on, I turn it off. So when you're listening to a podcast, you don't want to listen to an ad. So I do have, um, I have a five-step process for being a great guest that I can walk you through right now, but it really comes down to value. So the most important thing when you want to be a guest is not leading with a sales pitch. I don't ever want to hear a guest give a sales pitch. I want to hear them lead with value. So the first step is defining your story. And I like to say that everybody has a story. And when I ask, like, what is your story? There's that one that pops into your head. And it doesn't have to be this, like, massive, traumatic, dramatic, sensational story. It's just something that you live through that taught you something. And when, um, when I talk about these things, like the stories that come into my head, some of them are um, about my career, things that I've done professionally. Some of them are about trips that I've been on. Um, about um, a tattoo that I got in Ireland that is a story that everybody knows me for. And the reason that I tell those specific stories is because they taught me something. Um, like there are stories that I learned how to face my fears. There are stories that taught me that I can do things on my own, that led to me launching a business, that led to me quitting jobs and moving to other states. Um, so whatever your story is, there is value in that story. It's just a matter of how you tell it and how you understand that value. So that first step in becoming a good guest is owning that story and defining it so that you can figure out where the value is. 
Okay. So then the second step is going to be determining that value. So what is your unique value proposition? Um, we hear unique value proposition a lot with products. Uh, when things are being sold, Where what is unique about this product? What makes it different? So when I talk about your value, it's what makes you different. When someone goes onto a podcast, even if they're talking about a specific topic, anything about that topic itself can be Googled. Like you don't need me to come on your show and tell you how to pay down debt when you can just Google how to pay down debt. It's all out there. But what you can't Google is my experience with it and how my experiences have shaped the way that I go through that that debt re- repayment process. So it's really how this topic is unique to you and how you bring extra value to that information that becomes your unique value proposition. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, perfectly all right. I've written both the points, finding your story and then determining your USP. Yes, your unique value proposition. So from yes. there, it's, this is the part that I geek out on. Um, I love this part because I am equal parts like creative person and marketing person, but it's creating a lead magnet. And a lot of people talk about lead generation and lead magnets. Um, so the part that I think people should focus on is how to tie their story to their lead magnet. Okay. And for those who don't know, A lead magnet is a piece of content um, that can be downloaded or accessed for free in exchange for an email address or some kind of uh, contact information. And the idea there is that they get this free piece of content and you get permission to follow up and continue a conversation with them. So when it comes to podcasting, if you're giving them this lead magnet, um, you're not you can go through an entire podcast episode and not give a single sales pitch because you have access to contact them later and then give your sales pitch. So it takes the focus from the episode away from selling and it lets you focus just on telling your story and sharing value. So there's a whole system that kind of comes with lead magnets. There's um, putting it behind an email wall so it's accessible. There's creating sales funnels and automatic emails and all of that stuff that is, um, some people think it's a boring part. I think it's fun, <laughs> but um, there's different ways that you can do it and different types of lead magnets that you can create. I've seen ebooks and quizzes on people's websites and recipes and free webinars. There's so many different pieces of content that you can use. Uh, But once you build that, that's kind of the homework side that takes the pressure away from the episode. So you don't have to feel like you need to sell anything. Then you can just relax and tell your story and have fun with it and focus on creating a great episode because there's really three components when it comes to a podcast. There's the guest, the host and the audience. And you want to have a great experience for all three. So if I'm hosting a podcast and you come on and are just basically taking advantage of the situation and using it as free ad space, I don't feel like I won. I feel like I spent all of this money to produce an episode for you to get free things. So I didn't win there. And then the audience, they're just listening to an infomercial. They didn't win. But if you go on with a story that's entertaining, that has value, that, they, that they're going to learn something without having to spend money or hire you to do something, they get value. The host puts out a great episode and then you build trust, which brings us to the fourth step, which is build trust. <laughs> yeah. um, so while you're on the episode, if you are sharing value and you are talking about things that are important to you and why they're important and you are not trying to Uh, get anything, all you're trying to do is give. You're trying to give value, give stories, give information. Um, The people that are listening, they're going to start to trust you. And your experience as a guest, you um, as a host, you have seasons worth of episodes to build trust with an audience. But as a guest, you only have like 30 minutes. So you really have to focus on building that trust. So what you're going to be doing is positioning yourself as an expert, um, sharing your value, sharing your story. And then it's going to 
um, get people to want to continue that conversation. So then the right. fifth step, it's moving that audience offline and making their audience your audience. So that's when you actually use your lead magnet. So your lead magnet becomes your call to action. So you go through your whole episode talking about um, what's valuable about your experience and about um, your story. And then you invite them to um, continue the conversation offline by saying, if you go to my website, you can download this free thing. Um, and then they get into your uh, mailing list and you continue to hit them with more value, more education, and also your sales pitch. So by building that trust, they're more likely to want to purchase from you or hire you as a, as a coach, as a consultant, what is it, whatever it is, because they trust you already. Because I don't know about you, but if someone walked up to me on the street and said, hi, do you want to pay me a monthly amount of money to coach you on this topic? I'd probably keep walking because I have no idea why you are an authority on that topic. But if you spend 30 minutes talking about your story and your value and why you are an authority, that gives me a reason to think, okay, maybe I do want to learn from this person. So those are my five steps. They're super right. easy, right? Yes, yes. And, and, and very, very step-by-step step, people can, anybody can understand from this. But then if somebody says, okay, I should start podcast guesting, where to begin? Because there are so many uh, podcasts out there. How do I search them? What is the best way to do? And how? why should people have them on their shows? Sure. So when it comes to choosing shows, I like to tell people it's not about being on every podcast. It's about being on the ones that are going to matter to your audience. So you really have to take the time to figure out who it is you're talking to. Um, so have you heard of an avatar? Not the blue people, uh, but okay. the avatar of your target audience. Okay, that I, that is that is new to me. That's that almost is. like a buyer persona? Yes. So yeah, so your avatar is the person that you're talking to. So okay. by creating one person that kind of embodies um, the, the perfect audience for you, it's going to help you narrow down what kind of shows you should go on. So if you're trying to talk to CEOs of companies within the tech industry, um, that's your audience. And then you can use that information to choose what podcast to go on based on who their audience is. So once you find that audience overlap, those are the shows you're going to want to go after. But Picking the shows and actually getting booked on the shows are very different processes. So how, how to pitch to be on that show is really important. And that's when your story and your unique value comes in because that's what you're going to want to lead with when you pitch to be on a show because you don't want to say like, hi, I'm a business coach and I really want to talk to your audience about how I can coach them to do this because that's a sales pitch. But if you say instead, like, hi, I have this great process to help business owners increase revenues through this system, and I want to teach them how to do it, that's a little bit more value there, right? Right. So when you're pitching, you want to focus on that value and lead with that value. And that's going to get them to want to come bring you on because it's like, oh, that's a really interesting piece of value. That's a really interesting system. No one else is talking about that right now. And if, he, if they're going to come on and actually teach my audience how to do this, instead of offering to do it for them for money, that's going to be a lot of value for my audience. Because that's also how the host is building trust with their audience is they're bringing on guests that are going to offer a lot of value. Right, right. Now talking of, you know, I'm sure a lot of people will uh, get a lot of understanding of about podcast guesting. Uh, how do they start in terms of, do they go start from social media? Do they start from specific places? Where, where, where do they do? So because in a country like India, a lot of people are business people. A lot of people are coaches. A lot of people are authors. And everywhere, it's almost like the same thing is the global world. How do you look at places? Is it approaching the host directly? 
producers directly how does one go about with that part is it or or a, or a person that is where your person like you comes in with your with your uh, with your experience in all aspects of podcasting how does it work what is the best way a person can decide to move forward with podcast guesting yeah so um it sounds like you're asking about how to get booked on the shows themselves and how to yes. find them so yes. there's a few different ways to do it um there's the way of just reaching out um if you go to a podcaster's website they usually will have either an email address or a contact form some even have an application to apply to be a guest and so in those cases you just have to focus on your pitch so what are you pitching what is the value um so that's when you um are going to say hey i'm this is what i can bring to your audience this is what i would like to talk about here's what your audience will get out of it so crafting a good pitch is going to be really really important um, if you're going to do it that that direct way there's also ways of doing it that um, go through kind of different services uh, so there are pitching companies that will uh, create your pitch, create a, a speaker one sheet for you. Um, I've worked with a couple different companies for this. Um, companies like Interview Connections do this. And those are a great resource if you have the budget to pay somebody to do it for you. And then there's options like different websites. Um, my favorite is Podmatch. Um, it is a um, kind of like a podcast guesting online dating service. Um, so I really love that. And it's a much cheaper option than using um, a service because it's just a monthly payment. And but then again, it's they'll, they'll match you with shows that match your target audience. But you really have to craft that pitch and lead with that value. So um, those are a few different ways that you can do it. Um, I'm sure there are more. Those are my three favorites. Right. Right, Sarah. And then what about your firm? What does it do about Favorite Daughter Media, uh, a marketing agency dedicated to helping mission-driven businesses and creators use their outside voices? Is it also for people who want to be on the podcasting side, either side of the mic? Yeah, so what um, I created my company to do is help people that want to be guests. Um, I was working in the finance space for many years, uh, producing a finance podcast and helping the host get booked on other shows. And I found really great success with a few different processes within um, that experience. So I wanted to take that experience and focus on it a little bit. And that's why I launched my company so what we do is coach business owners and people that are, whether they're coaches or consultants or they're selling something, um, I actually sit down with them one-on-one -on -one and coach them through that five-step process. So I help them figure out which story is the most valuable, where that value is, um, how they can kind of go through the conversation without being salesy, without turning it into an ad and also help them build those funnels. So what is their lead magnet? What's the perfect lead magnet for them? Um, whether it's an ebook that I write for them, or if I just give them some ideas that they can run with and create themselves, walk them through the setting up of funnels and email blasts and web pages for it, and then um, help them uh, pitch themselves to these shows. And I actually just launched a new service that I'm really excited about that is partnering with um, Red Hat Media, which is an amazing media company in the space. And they'll do mock interviews, but they'll actually make it a guest uh, podcast experience that is fully produced as a podcast episode and then cut it up into different pieces that you can share. Um, and then that can become a, a media reel. So if you haven't had the opportunity to be on a show yet, you can have this piece of basically experience for your, like, a, like it's a resume. So you can show people like, Hey, here's how I performed as a guest. Um, I would love to come on your show and talk about this. So it just gives you a little bit more credibility. Um, if you haven't been on a show yet. Wonderful, wonderful. And talking about lead magnet, uh, I think Sarah, it is time I show the audience exactly. Uh, they, they can make the best use of your of your company you tell us about what you shared with us so that they can make the best use of this particular proposal 
Yeah. So I put together 50 of my favorite types of lead magnets. They're all in this free ebook that you can download. Um, it's at favoriteleadmagnets.com or you can scan that QR code. And it's just 50 different lead magnets that you can create on your own. You don't need me um, there. Um, there's 50 ideas like the ebooks and quizzes and checklists and different ones that you can create based on what your value is, what your business is and what's going to resonate with your audience. So this is my little Valentine's Day gift to everybody um, if you want to go and download that. And let me know what your favorite ones are. I'd love to hear what people are creating and what they're having success with. Um, so yeah, feel free to download that and start generating leads for your brand. Wonderful, wonderful. They, uh, as you said, they don't even need you. But for those people, and a lot of them will certainly... Uh, need you to help them explore their cre creativity, which you ex the way you do for yourself. But maybe with with less caffeine or more caffeine, that I don't know. <laughs> but how exactly they can do that? What's the best way to connect with you? Yeah, I mean, I'm all over social media or my website's favoritedaughtermedia.com. Um, but you can find me on Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn. Um, I would love to chat. I'd love to help you out. But remember, these are all things that you can do yourself. So if you just follow those five steps, you define your story, you find your unique value, create your lead magnet, build trust while you're on an episode, and then take the conversation offline, you can build your audience by yourself. You do not need my help. Of course, I'm happy to help you if you'd like my help. <laughs> I mean, of course, of course. It's it's you. you that's very kind of you that's very nice of you you are not trying to be salesy here but the fact is that a lot of people do want to outsource some of the things even if they can do so that it takes that burden away uh, here i want to understand the name of the company is very very you know special uh, uh, favorite daughter media what's the background to you to it and second thing is you say your brain uh, my brain works differently than most people I work with, and I come to accept it as my superpower. A lot of women listeners are there out there. They watch this particular show. How, what should they understand about finding their superpower? You know, two things again at the same time, but uh, worth, worth, worth if you can answer them for that. I love those questions. Thank you for asking that. Um, so my company name, it's kind of just from an inside joke with my family. Most people, when they hear my company's favorite daughter media, they assume I'm the only daughter. I'm not. I have a sister. She hates my company name, <laughs> but she is supportive of what I'm doing. Um, and I've just always joked that I am the favorite because I'm the baby. I have an older sister. So for the record, I'm not, but it is a fun name. <laughs> so I just fell in love with the name. And like I said, I've been in finance for so long and I am I know finance. I'm an accredited financial counselor. I love personal finance and teaching people how to make good choices, but I'm not, I don't fit into that box of financial professional. I'm more of a creative, I'm more of a kind of free spirit. And the creative, uh, the financial professional is a lot more kind of buttoned up. So when I launched my company, I just did it as kind of a passion project and as an excuse to just be unapologetically myself. So all of my branding is just very me. I Instead of having a blog, I have a diary. And it's just my things that I'm thinking about, things that I've been through, and anything that I can offer that if someone else is reading it, that maybe they have a similar experience and they don't really know how to put it into words, maybe my diary will help them. So... That is my brand. It is just myself. <laughs> I um, I just put as much as of me into it as I could. And now you got to remind me what that second question was. <laughs> about 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 uh, about your superpower. Yes. You accept that as your superpower. You know your work brain works differently than most people, and you have come to accept it as your superpower. That's what you say. How can people know about their superpowers and how they can come to you know live with that and live nicely and you know in helping others too yeah um i think your superpower is just that thing that makes you different i think people kind of see what makes them different as a bad thing and i saw that for myself i saw kind of my creativity and my inability to fit into that finance box i saw it as a bad thing for a while because i was working for a financial advising firm and 
my brain just didn't work the way theirs did. It doesn't work in Salesforce. It doesn't work in all of these systems that have been created by people that are in that industry and are meant to be in that industry. My brain is scattered. My brain is constantly thinking in puns and dad jokes and creativity. And I'm the one wearing pink when everyone else is wearing black. So I... Today, today sorry to interrupt. Today is the day of the pink. Even Google has that thing in pink today. This it's is my your favorite day. day. <laughs> I love the days that everyone has to wear pink. Um, but yeah, no, I started to realize that just because my brain didn't work the way theirs did, their company wouldn't run the way it needed to without my brain uh, because I was the one doing all the creation, doing the marketing. So it wasn't that me being more of a creative person was a bad thing. It just made me different. Um, but still being different was needed. So I really, I, they still needed me even though I wasn't like them. So I think when people think about what makes them different and they think about their stories, that's where they find that value. So, I mean, it goes back to those steps of being a great guest because it's really just talking about how you tell your story. So if you have those experiences that make you different, if you're surrounded by kind of people that are in the same box and you're not in it, that's okay because you're not meant to be in that box. So lean into what makes you different, lean into what makes you unique and what makes you you, because that is going to be your superpower. I am a creative person. I'm really good at creating. I'm really good at writing. I'm not good at the systems that they use in finance, but I'm good at creating financial um, information and financial resources. So it can be my superpower, even if it doesn't fit into their box and yours will be your superpower too. Wonderful, wonderful. I, I can see it, how your face lights up talking about creativity and not talking about anything else and nothing to feel bad about it. No. The only good thing in life is about happiness. If you are happy, you spread happiness across the world. If you are unhappy, even if you are the president of the United States, it does not matter to anybody and to you. It does matter to others because it impacts their life, but you will not be happy. So do I'm very happy that you are happy doing whatever makes you happy. My last question yeah. to you, uh, to you, Sarah, is that uh, you are very young. The favorite daughter, younger one. Uh, you are doing, you have done a lot. You have been the director of marketing for a financial adv uh, uh, advising firm. You know about. Now you are the president. You, own, you are the founder of Favorite Daughter Media. It's a lot that you have already achieved. Now, sometimes it can be a great thing. Sometimes you have to then plan about future, about seeing things. You are young. You have to live your life and do things for yourself or others. What is it that you have? How have you planned your life? What is it that you seek now with the type of person you are, you know, in terms of creativity? That is, I love that question. Um, I want to say almost nothing. Uh, because I have learned that planning my life is not going to go well. Um, I never thought I would have launched a business. I never thought I would have worked in finance. Basically, everything that I've done in my career has almost been by accident, but it's been the happiest accidents um, I could ever imagine. Um, I got my start in finance after I got fired from a job that I didn't love and I wasn't happy. I thought I would put it that way. Sorry again, it ignited the fire of creativity that you had. Everything that I have done has ignited that fire. I, I, basically every t everything that I've done, like even in college, I didn't know what I wanted to be. I changed my mind, and it always just came back to creativity. I had a professor that looked at something I wrote and just said, "You're gonna be a writer one day," and I didn't believe her. You were right. Professor Nichols, um, I became a writer, I became a designer, I became just a career creative. And I, when people ask about like a five year plan, I really don't have one other than I want to continue being happy. I want to continue creating because I am my happiest when I am creating. And when I launched my company, I did it 
um, specifically so that I could help people who are doing things that ignite that joy for me. So I'm very picky about who I work with. Um, I will give my free ideas to anybody. I will share my, my steps. I'll share my systems and you can run with it. But if what you're doing isn't in line with what ignites my soul, I don't personally feel like I need to work with you because I am just constantly on a mission to bring more joy and happiness and kindness into the world. And I really want to work with those businesses and those uh, entrepreneurs or who are doing the same. Wonderful. Wonderful. You have put it very well about, you know, igniting the fire and all getting fired. And I put it this way that many lives, many times in life, it's all a trial by fire. You have come out strongly, uh, much more in a purer form, in like a gold, like gold, gold gone through the trial by fire. And you have come out as a creative person that will the world is, you know, going to love and will continue to love for a long, long time. There's On actually a quote that makes that I, I think of when you say that, and I just have to share it. Um, it's okay if you fall down and lose your spark. Just make sure that when you come back up, you rise as the whole damn fire. And that is a saying that I have been living my life by since I first heard it years ago. Wonderful. Wonderful. On this note, it's a wrap on this very special edition of the KJ Masterclass Live. Thank you so much indeed for joining us. Thank you so much. Thank you.